Hi, so as promised, we are going to talk about the Good Game Part One. Uh, there are going to be a three-part series on this. Uh, so, Good Game essentially you are looking at the world from the perspective of a child, an adult, and uh, the changing face of uh, world at large because of technology primarily. So, these are the three elements that we are going to speak about. We are going to start by start the series. We are talking about children. So, uh, okay, what is the one intrinsic quality that every child has? Uh, when you ask this question, you get many answers, but the simplistic answer on this is, of course, that every child is curious by default. And uh, I mean, just to give you some data points, in India we have 25 million children who are born every year, and uh, in the world there are 140 million children born every year, approximately. And that's like a really big target group of kids, right? From uh, different backgrounds, uh, with different kind of uh, access, etc. So how do you keep the curiosity of these many kids alive? Now that's the question, right? Um, not the simplest thing, uh, but can be done. And uh, sometimes you just break all the rules and look at things from a different perspective. Um, it, I think it's almost a accepted fact that the schooling system today is more or less failing. I mean, of course, there are out of the way structures like China schools, but even there, there is uh, walled off, etc. But uh, there is a lot uh, to be looked at the basic system. There is a need to kind of integrate. So if we if we go deeper into this, uh, the, uh, humans primarily have four kinds of intelligence. There is intel intellect, which essentially is the ability to process. Then there is of course uh, memory. So memory could be uh, rote, could be uh, could be repetition, could be body memory, etc. Uh, then there is identity, so any I am statement, so I am girl, boy, Indian, global, anything, right, or um, Hindu, Muslim, all of that, all I am statements, identity statements, then of course there is chitta or creative thinking, so anything, any thought that comes to you uh, without uh, an external influence or something that you've kind of had as a inner voice for as long as you can remember is what you would call, call chitta or creative thinking, right? So most schooling systems are actually only built for teaching you uh, intellect and memory. Uh, everything else kind of falls off the wayside and becomes, it's not really a thought through part of the curriculum. Of course, there are Guru Kools and uh, this J. Krishnamurti schools, etc. But they are all anomalies, right? We need to do this for 25 million kids or one every year and 140 million in the world. So, uh, of course, this won't be a classroom system. So, if you had to redefine the whole system, what would that be? So, what would the next Malanda look like? Uh, would it be a CBT based system? Would it be a computer based training? If yes, uh, how would you impart it? <laughs> Uh, and not just that, uh, if uh, today it takes, um, if in the past it took 7 to 11 years for your brain to change based on the amount of inputs it had, today it probably takes 2 and a half years for your brain to change the amount of information and data that you're putting into your brain, tomorrow the brain, brain will change even faster. So in all of this, so there are different kinds of intelligences, then there is uh, so many children who are diverse, have language barriers from different backgrounds, etc. Then there is... Um, uh, neurodiversity uh, as part of the shift of the brain. So if neurodivergence is normal, <laughs> uh, how do you kind of work with it? And um, those are these are really hard things to kind of look at if you look at it in like in silos. But if you kind of just change the game a little bit. So if the only thing we have in our hands is a is a phone, which in other words could be a desktop or a laptop or a or a Apple Pro, Pro on the other side. If uh, the haves and have-nots of tomorrow will, will only be determined by the access to uh, a computer um, uh, as a learning device um, uh, in a group or in a alone setting from 0 to 7, 7 to 14, 14 to 20, 21 and like from learners, uh, what would that world look like? So if the Nalanda of tomorrow is a CBT program uh, and it is built for four kinds of intelligences, in multiple languages, with various contexts, in a collaborative environment, by teachers who are not uh, teaching you rote, uh, and you're learning from life, and your job essentially is to keep a child's curiosity alive, right, uh, in a certain age group. So how do you keep, keep curiosity alive? Very simply, it's a very simple model. You learn, uh, you do, and you make. What you're essentially teaching a child, um, and I'm calling anybody till 14 a child, uh, is uh, the ability to apply what you've learned and when you when you use that application to express that expression has inherent value so from the age of 3 to 20 if you've you got into the habit of building things with your imagination and your expression being an artist is normal <laughs> and in today's day and age uh, everybody needs to be some kind of part some kind of artistic expression right we are all artists but we along the way with our schooling and all of that kind of forget uh, the attempt here is that you don't forget 
and you make this you learn you do you make and maybe we'll put it out there on a cloud we'll put it out there uh, on a on a blockchain or whatever and there is inherent value and you just get used to this your work ethic now com comprises of expression which is uh, part of your identity which is part of your creative thinking and you're a completely different human then because you have a sense of self you're sovereign uh, and you're not easy to sway you're not easy to uh, mold you're not easy to um, uh, to be made less of and isn't that the time curiosity just requires you to be free and that's it so that's the first part next we'll talk about the adult ecosystem